Hi guys, Dr. Dillard here. It is January 2017. I got about half hour to kill. Let's set up a, a quiz, or I set up a quiz, and let's go over this quiz now. I call this the 1001-1002 quiz. Um, so I'm going to say the part. I'll, I'll hesitate about two seconds, and then I'll say uh, the answer to this. So you can pause the video. I'll give you time to pause the video. So let's see what we can see. First of all, what bone is this? It's the sphenoid. What's number five? No. It's not the lesser wing of the sphenoid. What's in between the lesser wing of the sphenoid? That's the body of the sphenoid. How about number four? anterior clinoid process of the lesser wing of the sphenoid. For my class, just of the sphenoid is fine. How about number three, upside down? It's not the cella tercica. I mean, it's a piece of the cella tercica. Dorsum cellae of the cella tercica, of the body of the sphenoid. For my class, dorsum cellae of the sphenoid is fine. Is this the anatomical position, by the way? Yeah. There's a superior view. There's a P to A view. Number 10. The clivus. That's the clivus. Uh, of the sphenoid. Remember, there's the continuation of that clivus of the occiput as well. How about those two holes? Actually, how about those three holes right there? You can see two holes toward the bottom. There's one that you can't quite see it penetrating through. I don't have a pointer. No, my finger's too big. Well, let's go from the bottom up. The little bitty hole is the Foramen spinosum, what goes through there? Meningeal branch of V3 and the middle meningeal artery. What's the next hole moving up superior medially? It's a bigger hole. Ovale, foramen ovale, what goes through there? It's still V3, mandibular nerve. And what's the one right up above, superiorly and more medially? At the clinoid process, the anterior clinoid process is now covering it, and now it's coming to light. That's rotundum. Who goes through rotundum? Round max, maxillary, maxillary division, V2 of trigeminal nerve, right? All those. Okay, let's not, uh, let's see. There's one under there, number nine. Greater wing of the sphenoid, more specific. Cerebral surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid. For my class, greater wing of the sphenoid's fine. Okay, let's go around this way. There's one. What view is this? Lateral view, number two. Lateral pterygoid plate, lateral portion of the lateral pterygoid plate of the lateral process of the sphenoid. I'm sorry, of the what? Pterygoid process, pterygoid process. Now the pterygoid process gives rise to the lateral medial pterygoid plate. And what's that hook? Can't see it. Pterygoid hamulus, which comes off which one? The lateral medial pterygoid plate. Medial pterygoid plate. What type of view is this? It's a head-on view. There's the creature's legs right there, pterygoid processes. What's number, see number two hiding up there inside that cave? What's that? Or that's number eight up there. 
sphenoid sinus. What's number seven? Orbital surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid. For my class, orbital surface of the sphenoid is fine. What about those slits? We can see those big uh, slits, the evil eyes. Superior orbital fissure. What goes through there? V1, cranial nerve three, four, and six. There's some vessels too, but don't worry about those. How about that little hole that you can see the daylight through right below the superior orbital fissures? Who's that? No, that's not optic. If I go over that way, there's the optic canal. See the daylight coming? I guess I could. You can, my finger's going over the back of it now. That's the optic canal. Who's that one? You can see the daylight. You can see the table behind it, right? The inferior portion of the superior orbital fissure. That's rotundum. That's foramen rotundum. And what is right in front of that? There's a space. My class doesn't need to know this. Pterygopalatine fossa. Well, maybe they do. I'm not sure. You might need to know that for lecture. Pterygopalatine uh, fossa is right in front of foramen rotundum. Uh, okay, what about six? That's the start of the kind of the root of the leg of the pterygoid process. So it's just the pterygoid process of the sphenoid is fine. Okay, let's move on. Now, what the heck is this thing? So, okay, I'll give you a kind of view of the thing here. Okay, number 16. Squamous portion of the temporal bone. Is this the inside view or the outside view of the temporal bone? We're looking at the inside of the temporal bone. How about number 17 down there? Hmm, got it? I'll give you a hint. Connects to the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. Zygomatic process of the temporal bone, that's part of the zygomatic arch. How about number eight? Can't really see that that good. That's a pointed thing. I'm sorry, number 18 there. Styloid process. How about that little rectangular shaped bone right there? 15's on it, but you can actually see that rectangular chunk of bone going all the way around. petrous portion of the temporal bone. What's that hole then? No, not the carotid canal. Ac internal acoustic meatus or internal auditory meatus. This is the, uh, by the way, the 3B scientific skull, uh, which is awesome. It's about $500. It's the, the one the non-colored version uh, that the school, this is actually the schools. This one actually I would recommend over my colored skull because the, the colored skull, I don't know, the paint, I've had a lot of trouble putting it together. They had to send me a bunch of replacement pieces for it. And so they need to keep working on that design. These seem to come together much easier. Oh, this is a good one. What in the world are we looking at here? Let me give you a second to orientate yourself. I gotta go to class in, let's see. I got five, 10, 15, I got about 15 minutes left. 31. Well, I know it's the hard palate, more specific. Palatine process of the maxilla. Palatine process of the maxilla. 32. Ooh, that's a tough one. Give you a couple angles here. Give you a hint. Now you can see the wishbone. Thirty-two.
perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. How about that hole right above there, formed by the kind of parts of the wishbone? Sphenopalatine foramen. I don't think my class needs to know that. Not for lab, for sure. How about that hole back there, 36, upside down? Maxillary sinus, 35. No, it's not maxilla. Lacrimal bone. How about that hole right below the lacrimal bone? You can see the daylight through it. Right below 35. Let's see a hole. Nasal lacrimal, opening to the nasal lacrimal duct. 34. Frontal process of the maxilla, 33, easy one. Nasal bone, thirty-eight. Volmar, Volmar. What's that giant hole? Ramen Magnum, what's 20? Not superior, inferior nuchal line. Inferior nuchal line. Oh. 19. Asterion. What's that giant hole right there you're looking at, right in the center of the screen? Easy. External acoustic meatus, or external auditory meatus. What is the bone around it? Tympanic portion. That's the tornado of bone, tympanic portion of the temporal bone. What's that suture right there we're looking at? Squamous suture. My students add that. I think I might have forgot to tell you, but I'll tell you in class next week. Squamous suture. Some people call it the parietal temporal suture or the temporal parietal suture, but squamous suture is a good name for it. What about that suture right there going up from number 19? That connects number 19 to number 12. Lambdoid suture. What about the one that runs up from number 12? Sagittal suture. What is number 12? Lambda or landa. Posterior fontanelle back in the embryologic time. That's it for there, I think. Oh, we got one over on the side there. C11. It's a kind of a bump. Parietal eminence, or I think it's two, uh, check me on that one, AKA I think is tuber, um, tuberculum. Yeah, let's just call it eminence, parietal eminence. There's an AK for it, I can't remember that. Okay, another busy one. Gotta watch my time here. Get you situated. Oh, there's that nose hole. What's that nose hole called? That's a right in. Piriform aperture. 27. Gonna have to speed up. Alveolar process of the maxilla. 26. Zygomatic process of the maxilla. Meeting the maxillary process of the zygomatic bone, which is not labeled. 28, frontal process of the maxilla. Thirty. Thirty is much bigger, it's that whole area there. Orbital portion of the maxilla. 
Oh, there's my favorite one. 29. It's really covering up the structure. 29. What the heck is that? Let me remove it. Ooh. So you can see it. It's that little island there. Orbital portion of the palatine bone. Orbital portion of the palatine bone right there. Okay, how about that little point right there? It's on your list, I believe, as well. Anterior nasal spine of the maxilla. Okay, that's an easy view there. What are these holes right here? Superorbital notch. If it was an actual hole, it would be superorbital foramen. What is this whole thing called? Superorbital margin. And we can't really see the kind of Cro-Magnum look. You can, I can feel it right here. What is that? That big raised bump right there. That silly thing. Superciliary arch, right in the center. Glabella, what's number 13? Frontal eminence. Anything else? Oh. What is that? 14 is these pointing at the zygomatic, remember? Be polite. Whatever it points at gets the first part of the name. Zygomatic process of the frontal bone. What is this surface right here? I thought I tagged that. Temporal surface of the frontal bone. What's this line? Temporal line. I've heard it called crest, but temporal line. That'll split into a superior and inferior temporal line in a bit. Okay, anything? Oh, I did mark it over here. What's that? Again, temporal, underneath the temporal line, it's the temporal surface of the frontal bone. What's this region right here? Orbital surface of the frontal bone. Okay, last thing. Now, this isn't the best in the world. That should give it away. We got three structures. We got a boom, 23's on one. Then we got a thing in the middle. In reality, this should be coming way out. This is, I don't know, I guess it would be too breakable, so they just made it short. 23 would be the middle nasal concha of the ethmoid bone. Do we do 22? Kind of a side view there. Orbital surface of the ethmoid bone. Oop, 24. Let's move it. Don't do that on the test. Crystogalli, that's the little sail of the sailing ship. Crystogalli of the ethmoid bone. And Crystogalli rises up from, this cartoon doesn't have all the 20 holes. That would be the cribiform plate would be the base of that. Can't really see that good. Okay, enjoy the quiz, see you later.